So a little post-election reaction here. I want to cover a couple of different demographics. One is going to be marriage, married individuals, and the second is going to be Gen Z. Uh, some very interesting things, very interesting things that are happening here in these two demographics. First of all, uh, make sure that you are subscribed, that you hit the bell for notifications, that you sign up for a free newsletter, Quick Week at quickmedia.com, cwicmedia.com there on the homepage. And this episode is brought to you by Go and Do Travel and the Gospel on the Nile Cruises. We're doing several of these a year. Some of these are already sold out for next year. There are a few spots left in March uh, for Gospel on the Nile, and then we have opened up September 2025 also. Uh, you can find out more about these trips at quickmedia.com, cwicmedia.com. Scroll to the top for trips and events and go down to Gospel on the Nile. Okay, so in this episode, I want to cover some charts here, some demographics that are, are, are really very interesting. I want to start with married individuals in the United States because these things break in different ways for the left and for the right, the Republicans and, and uh, for the uh, Democrats, right? I want to show you this chart here. This is fascinating. Uh, look over on the far left here. You have married men, okay? 39% went for Harris of married men. 59%, almost 60% went for, of married men went for Trump, okay? Now let's go all the way over to the other side of the, of the chart here to the right. This is unmarried women, single women. This is J.D. Vance's cat ladies, right? Harris, 60% of the vote. The exact opposite of what you have with married men. And 37% of unmarried women went for Trump. So one end of the scale is essentially 60% single women going for Harris. And the other side is 60% of married men going for Trump. Now, let's narrow this down and go into the middle here for married women and unmarried men. So for married women, even they broke barely more for Trump. So when we talk about women and the women's vote and we keep thinking of the Democrats and et cetera, well, that's only single women. That's only single women. 50% of all married women voted for Trump. 49% voted for Harris. So we're seeing, you see what happens here, and there's a, there's a couple of things to think about on this, by the way, right? One would be uh, a certain type of person that would vote more conservative gets married. And so they're already in that position where, let's say a woman, right? is going to be more conservative, so she's going to be a little bit more traditional. She's going to want to get married and have kids. And therefore, naturally, she's going to vote for the Republicans, right? Or uh, bend more that way. And of course, if you are less conservative, you're, you may not get married. You may be single, and, and therefore, you're going to vote for the Democrats a little, at, at a higher break. Or those that get married become more conservative, and those that stay single get more liberal. I don't know what the answer to that is. I would imagine it's a little bit of both. But you've got a dynamic in the United States where, based on this, the Republicans have a, a uh, motivation for more of America to be married. And beyond that here, I'll get to it in just a second here. And the Democrats have a motivation for more individuals to be single. Now, if I'm looking at this, certainly... Marriage as an institution is good for America, but it is not good for the Democrats. And so I think the Democrats have a couple of things to look at. Number one, well, do we want more of America to be single or do we move toward uh, um, being more appealing through the way we handle issues, political issues, to those that are married? In, in my mind, the direction is, as the left and the right get further and further apart here, I don't think the latter is going to happen. I think the, the Democrats are going to dig in their heels, double down. You've already seen it even today in response to the results. And they are not going to be the party of the family. 
And speaking of family, let's go beyond just marriage and look at the difference between those that have kids and those that don't have kids. Now, this is for those that have a child under 18. And you'll notice here there's not that big of a difference. And I'm going to show you a different chart here that's going to show you the difference between those that just have a child under 18 and those that have several children in the home, right? Because when you look here on the way this breaks, looking on the left side of this chart here, 47% of those that have a child went toward Harris. Those that did have or didn't have it, 47% of those that have a child went for Harris. Those that, 51% of those that have a child went for Trump. And of course, pretty much the opposite for those that do not have children. So again, Trump gets the vote here for those that have children. And, and from, from parents, right? From parents, the parent vote goes to Trump. For those that do not have children, the, the vote goes to Harris. So again, a very interesting dynamic here. What is this going to double down on both sides? Is the messaging going to be family and anti-family? And I do mean anti-family. Because policies that support the family are definitely going to be found more on the right. Now, we can go beyond this and look at those and look at the fertility rate state by state and see how they voted. Now, this is a really interesting chart here. Check this out. So you can see here on the left is the fertility rate going from 1.1 all the way up to 2.1, which by the way, you've only got a, a, a single state, one state in all of the United States, and it's not Utah. I'll, I'll, I'll give you some more information on Utah here in a minute, but it's, it's, uh, it's South Dakota, the only state that is above replacement in all of the union. <laughs> Other than that, we are imploding in terms of, of families. We are depopulating outside of immigration. It is very concerning here, very, very concerning. And this is, quite frankly, a good sign for the Democrats. Because as that fertility rate drops the country moves to the left. So you see here on the left is the fertility rate. On the bottom, going from left to right, is the vote share that Trump gained. Okay, so as you see the the states that are rising up in the chart and moving to the right, they all coincide. They're, They're all pretty close to coinciding with the higher the state's fertility rate, the more it votes for Trump. The percentage of the vote goes to Trump. So the larger the families are, on average, in each state, the more the vote goes to Trump. However, our fertility rates are dropping at breakneck speed. And and again, I I know that Elon Musk is an example of someone who's really trying to get this out there so that we understand the whole West is is in decline, partially because our, our families are decreasing in size. Our marriage is decreasing in numbers, and our families are decreasing in size. And when you do that, a civilization implodes. And that's what's happening in the United States. Let me give you the biggest example of this. Take a look here at uh, uh, Washington, D.C. Right? You've got the, the, the at in, going back nine years. So nine years to 2015, they had a 1.47 replacement rate. Right, so that's for every two people, a couple, they are replacing it with 1.47 kids on average. Okay, they have declined in the last nine years down to 1.11 replacement rate. Okay, so almost half, almost half. What was the vote in D.C. in this election? 94 percent voted for Harris. Six percent of all of D.C. voted for Trump, which, by the way, should give you a really good idea because those are, granted, there's a a number of inner city individuals that that are in that area, but you have got, you've got the machine working in D.C. Who do they pull for? Right? Which is the party of the state? Not hard to see there. Now, I want to move over to Utah. Look at Utah. In 2015, it had the highest replacement rate. Just just nine years ago. Just nine years ago, it had the highest replacement rate at 2.29. Okay? 
What are they at now? Utah's dropped down to 1.84. Now, 1.84 is still one of the higher. There's a few states that are that are now higher than Utah. But it is the largest drop in all 50 states in the last nine years. And this is one of the reasons, and looking at these, these statistics, that I keep telling people, Utah is going to go blue. It's going to go blue. When you mix the, the economic well-being of that state, which is soaring, along with a, a decrease, which and these two go along together all the time, a decrease in the size of family, a, the largest decrease in the size of family in that state, you're going to end up on the left. You're, and, and, and Utah is, I think, that Wasatch Front area, right, going all the way up to uh, the northern counties, Davis County, for example, all the way down to Utah County. You're, you're looking at an area that is full of pride flags. Just one example, full of pride flags. You've got universities there, right, three major universities in those areas, and uh, it's, I, I, I think you're looking at, at, at Utah turning blue in, in the not too distant for future, uh, along with all of those that are moving into the state. That adds an additional element of, of, of change in the demographic. And as we see this, right, as you see with the decrease in the size of family, the more that group moves over to the left. Now, the second group I want to look at is Gen Z. This is a group that is moving in the opposite way, where where families are shrinking, where depopulation is taking over the United States and all of the West. That is that is going to be a move to the left, right? That will be a move to the left. Now, for Gen Z, where you have a f- even where you have a group that is going to have fewer years to have more children, a group where more and more marriage is being pushed off till later in life, and kids are being pushed off later in life, there's actually a a very strong move to the right. And this is unforeseen. Take a look at this change here. This is is really something, even with women. Going back, this is going to run back six years, right? So the last four elections, including the one we just had. Going back to 2018, women ages 18 to 29 broke for the left at 33 at a 33 percent difference right so 33 percent more uh women 18 ages 18 to 29 broke for the left for the democrats two years later it's almost the same thing 2020 now i don't know if it's covid or if it's a being tired of wokeness or what what is going on here but you move from 2020 to 2022 and women ages 18 to 29 drop an 11 points 11 points in 2 years so that the republicans basically are gaining another 11 11% there they're still 21% more likely to vote for the democrats coming down to 2024 not as much of a difference right uh in in the last 2 years only another 3% but it's still trending to the right for young women now look at the men Going back to four elections, going back to 2018, men had an, at at 19%, men ages 18 to 29 were 19% more likely to vote Democrat, right? So that's where the women are today. The young women are at about the same spot today that men were back six years ago, right? Four elections, okay. So then two years later, they moved to the right and only 15% more likely in 2020 to vote Democrat. And then again, the massive change here for 2020 to 2022, which is COVID, you go from 15% more likely to vote for Democrats for young men all the way to only 1% more likely to vote for Democrat in 2022. And then something very strange happens where the women move 3% to the right from 2022 to this election in 2024, the men move another 15% to the right, where 
men ages 18 to 29 were 14% more likely to vote for Republican and Trump than they were for Harris and the Democrats. So in four years, young men have made a 29% change to the right. And young women in those four years have made a 14% move to the right. And I would say it's only COVID if it was only the 2020 to 22 election areas. But then when you have a small change still to the right for the women of Gen Z, and then another massive move for the men to the right, you have to say it's something else. For the men especially, I think it's they're very tired of the way they're treated. I think that young men are being lost in our society and they seem to think that the Republicans are going to help them out more than the Democrats do. So two demographics here that we look at that if the, these demographics are moving very quickly around our back and forth. I'm going to do another episode on, on the Mormon vote here and, and we'll take a look at what is ha- what seems to be happening in those areas. We can only look at that geographically, but uh, there are definitely changes that are happening where you have those that have been on the left are moving to the right, but in the, with the Latter-day Saints, I think we're getting more that are moving from the right over to the left. This may be a Trump factor, but there might be other things that are uh, influencing this as well. So we'll get to that episode shortly. Thanks for listening.